Full disclosure, I'm a bit of a fish food hoarder, meaning if I see a new food on the shelf, I just have to try it. But that does end up wasting like a lot of money and space. And then if I don't use up the food in time, it goes stale, right? So after a bunch of testing and trying of different fish foods based on their ingredients, palatability, ease of use, and of course price, this is what I've narrowed it down to my top 10 favorite fish foods uh, that I personally use. Hi, my Irene with Aquarium Co-op, and first up on the list is, of course, a flake food. Now, I personally have krill flakes and spirulina flakes right now, but I find myself reaching more for the krill flakes just because it is such a high-quality protein, it's irresistible to fish, and of course, it turns them bright, bright red. I also like flakes just because you can crush them up with your fingers if you want to feed them to a smaller nanofish like chili resboras, or if you have a bunch of babies that you're trying to raise up. Number two is a good quality pellet food. Now, everybody has their personal preferences. I mostly keep nano fish, so I find myself using a lot of extreme nano. It's really densely packed with a lot of high quality ingredients. It's slowly sinking, and so I like to feed it to kind of mid-level swimming schooling fish, like tetras, resboras, as well as any bottom dwellers, corridoras, you know, live bears, idiom, really any kind of nano fish. This is a good staple. Now, if you have a betta fish, I do personally use like a specialized betta pellet just because they generally, I like the floating ones near the surface because the betta fish's mouth can more easily come and eat it, as well as go for a betta pellet that is smaller in size. I've definitely had occasions where I bought a food, it was a little too big, and the betta kept eating it, spitting it out, eating it, spitting it out. So if you see that behavior, I would go for either the extreme betta pellet or Hakari has the betta bio gold. Both of them are nice and small and perfect for betta fish. Now, if you have bottom dwellers like Corridor's catfish and Coolie loaches, you definitely need a wafer food. In the past, I've used a lot of the Hikari sinking wafers. They're perfect. They're kind of small-ish and they sink all the way to the bottom immediately. However, recently I've tried experimenting a little bit with Extremes um, giant, well giant to me, 14 millimeter wafer. And I thought my nano fish wouldn't be able to take them, but I think they're actually um, a form of enrichment, especially for my live bears. They'll just keep picking at it and then they chase that little wafer around like a hockey puck everywhere. So to me, it's entertaining and I think they're getting a little more exercise too. <laughs> Now, if you are breeding a lot of fish or you just have a lot of smaller nano fish like I do, one of my favorite foods is actually the Aquarium Co-op Easy Fry and Small Fish Food. Look at this like weird bottle. It is so convenient to just go around from tank to tank and do a little few squeezes here and there. And it's super fast to feed all of your tanks, especially when it's like a really busy day and you just don't have time, but you need to make sure your fry are fed. Definitely go with this. For number six, we've got freeze-dried foods. Now, I've tried a lot, like the freeze-dried bloodworms, Daphnia, but I don't think my favorite one is actually the Tubifix worm cubes. I saw that master breeder, Dean, one time, he stuck it to the front of his tank, kind of like those Sarah tablets that we used to sell, and all the fish came toward it. And I was also heard that Tubifex worms are one of the best kind of foods to feed Corridoras when you want to condition them for breeding. So for me, that's my favorite freeze-dried food. Now, if you have invertebrates like um, snails, shrimp, crabs, or anything that needs like a little more calcium and minerals in their diet, I would say probably my favorite food, this is hard. <laughs> I have a whole like video I made about 30 different foods or something that I tried with my shrimp. But I probably would go for Hikari Shrimp Cuisine just because they are the smallest in size. Like I've done the crab cuisine from Hikari before and my Amano shrimp would always like steal these giant pellets and just swim away with the entire thing. So I think I will go for the smaller one just so that more fish in my aquariums can get to them. But that's my personal choice. Okay, now let's talk about one of my favorite foods, frozen foods. I have a bazillion different varieties all in my freezer because I love feeding frozen foods. Um, I would say if you have like bigger fish, probably the classic frozen bloodworms is what I'd go with versus if you have smaller fish, um, maybe either the baby brine shrimp or Daphnia cyclops, that kind of thing. Frozen foods are great because they are kind of a single ingredient food generally. Um, they're really high quality. All the nutrients are like flash frozen immediately. However, if you are feeding kind of picky fish, 
that don't get an, a lot of other nutrients and minerals from, let's say, regular dry prepared foods. This is what I normally do. So I basically take my cube of frozen food, um, I melt it in a little tiny Tupperware container, and then I do get a bottle of Phytochem just because it does have some of those extra nutrients that may be missing in a whole ingredient kind of food. So just add a couple of drops there, let it dissolve, and then I scoop it out and put it in my various tanks as needed. All right, this might seem a bit of a contradiction, but because I'm a busy fish keeper, you would think my favorite foods would be like flakes and pellets, stuff that you can easily scatter, but I don't know why. I really like Rapashi gel food. This is the Community Plus and the Soylent Green, and I tend to mix them together 50-50. And it does take time to prepare, like about five minutes. You gotta take the powder, put it in hot water, it sets like jello, but then you can just scoop it out and feed all of your community tanks. And it's really nice because it doesn't dissolve right away. It kind of stays solid for up to 24 hours. It's really good for feeding fry or slow grazers. And I love it because this little guy right here, uh, Unicron, he's the tank boss in my community tank and he will steal everybody's food. But if I put in Rapashi and kind of drop it in the different corners of the tank, he can't get to them all. And so I feel like everybody in the tank uh, has an opportunity to eat. So that's why I really like Rapashi. Of course, I have to mention my favorite live food, which is hatching live baby brine shrimp. It's actually pretty easy, I feel like, for a live food, because I've kept various types of worms and cultures, and inevitably, I ended up forgetting about them. <laughs> and that doesn't go so well, versus the baby brine shrimp, you just set a timer on your phone for 24 hours later, go ahead and harvest your culture, and then feed it right away. Excellent food, especially for kind of conditioning your fish to start spawning, as well as feeding your fry. Just something about their jerky little movements really entices their behavior, so they just eat up nom, 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 tons and tons of food, and they grow up really fast and healthy. After experimenting with so many different kinds of foods, I've definitely realized I've been a bit excessive in my shopping and I need to kind of downsize to more minimalist levels. And in reality, like, we always preach like fish need variety in their foods so that they get a healthy mix of nutrients, but I probably don't need that much variety. So I would say nowadays, I probably feed day one frozen foods, day two rapashi, day three some kind of dry prepared food, rinse and repeat. And then about once a week, I like to hatch the live baby brine shrimp for them more so, more frequently so if I am actively breeding something. Now, if you have never hatched live baby brine shrimp before, I am challenging you right now. This stuff is magical. Like I said, induces breeding, raises healthy fry, uh, provides enrichment. So don't be afraid. We've got an easy step-by-step -step tutorial right over here. Just follow it and your fish are gonna love you, promise.